for 30 years, scientists have been looking at this rogue protein called amyloid that builds up in the brains of people with Alzheimer's disease. And for those 30 years, they've really struggled to find a drug that does anything to that protein. But now they have one that really works. In this trial, the, the amount of protein reduced so much uh, that uh, the patients wouldn't have actually had a formal diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease after 18 months of treatment. And that had an impact on their clinical symptoms too. It reduced the mental, uh, the, the progression, the decline in mental agility and memory that you uh, associated with, with Alzheimer's uh, by 27%. And that is hugely significant. The first time that they've been able to show that. And doctors are optimistic that with longer treatment, that clinical benefit would become more significant. It's not a cure, but this does slow the progression of Alzheimer's for the first time and allows patients to spend more time with their families, of course. And when will it be available on the NHS, or is that too early to say? Well, it, it, this is really important because this is going to be a massive challenge for the NHS. At the moment, most patients are diagnosed too late to have this drug. And also the, the number of uh, brain scans called PET scans uh, and also lumpunc lumbar punctures, these are biopsies of the spinal fluid that are needed to accurately diagnose Alzheimer's disease are only given to just 1% of patients. So this is going to need a revolution in the NHS to actually deliver. But we've been here with multiple sclerosis in the past with the treatments that are now available for that disease. And doctors are optimistic that with some forward planning, they can do the same here. It is an expensive drug, this lecanemab, but it's worth it in the long run, they say, because it would save on expensive social care. OK, and when might it be available? I mean, obviously, people listening this morning will think they're straight on the phone to the GP saying, I want that drug. Yeah. Look, it's a really important question, Kay, and this is a phase three trial. Now, the, the drug company thinks that it's going to apply for a drug license in the US early next year and then follow up with licenses here in the UK and in Europe. That could happen next year, too. It takes a while for them to look at the pros and cons of treatment. And this drug did have side effects. It's important to stress that. Uh, there, there was a potential for brain bleeds. So they need to make sure that they've got good monitoring in place to make sure patients can benefit from this. But hopefully it would be here used in two or three years. But again, I have to stress, this is just for mild cases, early stage Alzheimer's disease. And the NHS needs to really ramp up to make sure that patients do have good access to this drug. And finally, and just develop your point there, um, Thomas, it, it, we, we must say that people have died during these trials, haven't they? Yes, the, you know, the, the side effects are, are, are really something that they are concerned about. And they think it's because these clumps of protein, of the road protein, when they're removed from the brain, it does really, uh, result in brain swelling and potentially ble brain bleeding. So it does need careful monitoring. But in terms of deaths, it was about the same number of people who died in the treatment group as those who were given the dummy drug. So uh, they have to be looked at very, very carefully to make sure that uh, this can be caught at an early stage. But one doctor said uh, last night, if, his, if he offered this drug to most patients, they would be happy to take this drug because uh, the, 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 the benefits are so great compared to the risk. This is such a devastating fear disease of old age that most people would take this drug and run that risk.